Hey folks, Glenn here. I'm just sat here doing a bit of retouching on this latest uh, Wolverine picture and there was one element of this picture I thought would be handy just to go through to show you why I chose a particular technique in Photoshop to do it. Um, so let's just go down to the very start of the layer stack where we've got the background here which is my London scene. Now I shot this with a wide angle, it was a 14 to 24 and I think I was right out at 14 mil. So it gave me a nice wide shot, but for the final picture I wanted a lot more in there so that we could put our Wolverine character in and a lot more sky. So one thing I had to do was to extend the canvas and fill it in with the sky. So you'd think it'd be pretty easy because the time of night that I took this shot, which was around about eight o'clock in the evening, I think it was. There was no clouds, the sky was pretty featureless, so it would be pretty easy to fill in. So I wanna show you three ways, um, of three ways that I tried to see how it would work and why one of them was the best way. Well, if we look at the bottom of the layer stack, first of all, we've got our original layer here. I've called this one raw HDR. You probably can just about see that. But we know that whenever we do any work in Photoshop, we never work on the, the background or the, the beginning layer. So I'm just going to press Command or Control J to duplicate that. So now I'm working on the copy of the background layer. So I've got this, this area here. Now, one way that I could do this, I could get my rectangular marquee tool and just drag out a selection of the sky just beneath where we've got these uh, transparent pixels here where there's actually nothing on the canvas there. So once I've got this area selected using my rectangular marquee tool, I can then go to edit and content aware scale. Now when I do that we get these handles which I can click and then drag up to fill that area in and we'll just press enter or return and we'll just deselect. Now that looks pretty good until we zoom in now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on your screens, but here at the bottom is the normal sky, and as I scroll up to the area where we've just used that content aware scale, you can see that this pixels have been stretched out. So that area wasn't really that good. It was maybe too big an area to, to fill using content aware scale. So that one didn't work. Now the next one we could use is content aware fill. So all I would do there is I'm gonna get my um, magic wand, click within the area that contains the empty canvas there, but where you can see the marching ants, where it's right on the border of the sky and the empty canvas, I'm just gonna to go to select, transform selection, and just bring the selection down just a little bit so that it's not right on the line, it's actually just below it, and like so. Then we'll go to edit, fill, and we'll choose content aware from the drop down menu here. Now this might take a few moments because this actual picture here is pretty big. I think at the moment, I don't know, I think we may be up to about 50 or 60 layers, something like that, and it's about just over two gigs in file size. But saying that, it looks like it's going pretty quick. So we'll give it a moment, wait to see what content aware fill can do for us. So it's almost there. And there we go, so let's deselect and we'll move in. That's looking pretty good. There's a few kind of little areas here that could do some work, but then we've got this little patch here. So clearly content aware fill didn't work. Now I don't know about you, but when I've used content aware fill, it's almost got it's almost like it's got a little bit of artificial intelligence because every time you try it, you get a different result. And it seems to learn. I don't know if I'm imagining that or what, but it does seem to learn. So content aware fill is very, very good, but in this instance, didn't really do what we wanted. So here's what I did do. Here's how I actually managed to do this technique. All I did was um, got my, I obviously created a duplicate of the background layer. I went back to get my rectangular marquee tool and I made a selection of the sky just below where we've got the empty canvas. And then press Command or Control J to put that up onto its own layer. Then I've just used the move tool, whoops, use the move tool just to drag that to fill those empty canvas there, the empty canvas area there. Let's just make that just a little bit bigger like so. So now we've got it filling the canvas area but you can see it's a pretty obvious difference between the two bits of sky. But what I'm going to do is in the layers panel I'm going to make sure that this layer containing the bit I've just moved to the top is selected and then the area of the sky beneath, so my background copy layer if you like. So the area that I've just selected and cut to its own layer and the one just beneath it. Now you can see in the layers panel, both of those layers are selected. Then I'm gonna to go to edit 
and auto blend layers. Now this is a fantastic piece of kit within Photoshop and I think because of things like the introduction of content aware fill and all those kind of fancy things, we can tend to brush over what is already in Photoshop and does a pretty good job. So auto blend layers, we've got a couple of options here but I'm gonna make no change to it whatsoever. It's gonna be by default, it says panorama, doesn't really make any difference in this, but at the bottom it's got a little tick where it says seamless tones and colors. And I'm gonna click OK and pretty quickly, Photoshop completely blends in that sky. So now we can see there's no patches over here. The blend across the middle there is perfectly fine. And that is basically how I did it. So this is just a prime example of the fact that Photoshop is such a massive program. There's never like a one click fix for every situation that you come across. Here we've got three ways that, in fact, there's more ways in Photoshop we could have filled this in, multitude of ways. But this is just three ways to show you how we can fill in that blank canvas area and get the result that we want using one of them, which maybe we're kind of like brushing over because of, like I said, things like content aware fill. So that's just a very, very quick um, tutorial. I thought I'd sort of put together while I was working on this Wolverine picture where I'm just putting in all things like rain and all that kind of stuff now. So it shouldn't be long until I've got this one finished, but uh, that's it. I'll leave it for now and I'll see you next time.